Hey everyone, it's Stuart with Wine All the Diamond. Today I'm reviewing a wine from a region that I always am looking for and I can never find it and I found it during my Costco haul and if it's any good, I'm gonna have to fight. I might actually have to physically fight my wife to get my card back. I got a Kunawara Cabernet. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, if you liked today's video, go ahead and click that subscribe button and do all the other stuff that YouTube people who are successful tell you to do. Uh, anyway, so today I'm gonna to be reviewing the 2016 Jim Berry Cover Drive Cabernet Sauvignon. It's from Kunawara in Southern Australia. Um, it's, the actual location is west of Melbourne, southeast of Adelaide. And it is 14.3% alcohol by volume. And like I said, I'm always looking for these because most of them have a really cool expression of cab and I'm really hoping it shows in this. I don't know if it does, because I haven't opened it, as you can see, screw top plus one. Man, if it doesn't have it, oh, I hate when this happens, ready? Oh, it didn't pop, sometimes they pop. It's no fun when it doesn't play along. Yeah, so Kuna Wars, like I said, it's interesting because it has this um, climate that's kind of similar to Bordeaux in a way, but there is a, in all the wines, all of the cabs, I should say, that I've tried from the area, there's a very distinctive eucalyptus note that comes through on this. And I'm hoping it's there today. But before we do anything else, let's get to the color. Medium ruby, no artifacts, no cloudiness. And on top of that, that ruby is actually, given another year or two, is gonna start turning garnet. Yeah, it's, it's really close. It's really close to turning, but it doesn't quite have enough depth of color to be dark or deep as the terminology is officially said uh but what does this thing smell like wow so there's a good amount of plum there's black currant there's a little bit of a like a candied blackberry there's a little bit of earth there's a touch of cedar just a little bit a pretty strong sort of milk chocolate note to it. But, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me open it up, let me open it up. Okay, tiny bit of black cherry, but that's not what I'm looking for. I would say on the nose, the alcohol smells high. It's it's pretty pretty hot on the nose. Really breathe. There it is. Yeah, so um, I really had to kind of aerate it on, on this wine, but it's there. So, so have you ever, uh, most people, who are probably old enough to watch my content, uh, have heard of um, Vicks Vapor Rub. So you kind of get that minty intensity. So there's a little bit of a mint here, but there's also like a eucalyptus note in there. This wine kind of reminds me of having like a slight undertone of Vicks Vapor Rub. But how does it taste? Medium plus tannins. Wow, that's interesting. Fruit intensity is a weird experience on the palate. Up front, it's kind of like subtle on the approach. Mid palate. Boom! Just blows your mouth up with flavor. Those tannins kick in, everything. Going in the finish, the tannins are kind of gone, the intensity mellows, and everything is just subtle all the way into the... Now, it stays subtle for a long time though. Long time. Uh, this, I'm gonna have to actually time this. Hold on a second. So the finish is medium plus finish. And there it is, and it's, it's, it's like, some of those fruits are kind of sour too, which I don't mind. It actually kind of gives a little bit of depth to the, sort of the candied notes that you get on the nose. So it kind of gets like, it smells kind of candy-ish and then you taste it and it's not, and it, it, it's fine, I'm fine with that. The, the eucalyptus and sort of that mintiness aren't very strong on the palate. They kind of show up a little bit more in the finish, but even then, just overall, they're just kind of blending in with everything else. So you're, that's why I think it was so hard for me to really get this in there is because now that I've opened up the wine, I get it very well. Like you can you can get it the moment your nose enters the bowl, but before I really had to kind of move it around. Let's get to the blick. Balance standpoint, I mean from a structure standpoint, this is really hard wine to judge. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give you uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a full point for balance. Just because I, I don't know if I would remove or add anything to this wine at this moment. Length, medium plus finish, half a point. 
intensity. On the nose, you have medium intensity on the nose. On the palate, you have a momentary hit of this pronounced note, and then you're really subtle after that. So I'm just gonna even you out and give you half a point on there. And in terms of complexity, uh, I'm getting a good amount of primary. I'm getting a touch of secondary. And what, what feels like it's about to start developing a little bit of tertiary. Like in a couple of years when it starts to turn garnet, it's probably going to start to develop probably a little bit with the prune note to it. I think that plum is going to be the first thing to go. Um, or maybe with like a dried blackberry type effect. A lot of that secondary isn't there. But oh, man, you really have so much primary on this. I'm going to give you half a point. Give you half a point for the primary. As this thing ages, it's going to get more tertiary. It'll become a little bit more complex. Uh, so that gives you two and a half points. I'm going to give you good. I, I, I have had some better cabs from Kunawara before, which is one of the reasons why I'm I'm so interested in trying them whenever I can find them. So like this one isn't as expressive with the mint and eucalyptus. Uh, it's much more expressive with the primary fruit. There isn't much secondary interference in there. And uh, it does some tricky things on the palate in terms of the intensity and, and not being consistent all the way through or kind of being con like high up front and then kind of weaning its way down it kind of does this weird spiky thing and it really is like a like you kind of taste it and then whoa and then boom goes into the finish and it's tapering off so I, I, it's a little bit a little bit funny like that but but if you bought the wine it's not bad wine i mean i'm i'm gonna sit down and enjoy a couple glasses of it while i'm editing the video Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the Jim Berry Cover Drive Kunawara Cabernet? I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. I told you I'm gonna drink drinking more of this while I edit the video. Stay. I'll see you later.